Hello and welcome to There Is a Method to the Madness. My name is Rob Maxwell and I'm an exercise physiologist and personal trainer. I'm the owner of Maxwell's Fitness Programs. I've been in business for the past 25 years. This podcast is all about fitness and wellness and sports psychology and diet, nutrition and training and all those good things. And as the title, There's a Method to the Madness, alludes to I like to talk about like why things work that was the title of my book I just published there is a method to the madness and I like to get into like why things work so for example instead of just saying um, do three sets of 12 on a particular exercise then let's talk about you know why that may or may not work you know what's the science behind it and there is a ton of science, you know, and that's the fun part. It's not overly, overly complicated either, so um, I don't think so anyway. So, you know, sometimes things get overcomplicated when you look at training regimens. So the reality is there is a way to do things the most efficient way, and there's ways to do things in an inefficient way. So I like to talk about that, and it, you know, definitely interests me too. So... I want to talk today about um, using strength training as a means to keep you doing what you want to do as long as you want to do it. One of our sponsors is Jonathan Gilden, and um, he was at a book signing that I did for the Rotary Club. And uh, I looked out and I recognized somebody, and I thought, oh, wow, you know, it's pretty cool. He was at my. Uh, my pump and run I had and uh, you know he and his wife competed and Jonathan was actually the lead runner so that means he's fit so it, and it's funny um, little side note on that you know like every group you speak to you know there's there's a nice segment of society out there so you had your fit and you're not so fit you're super fit and you're super out of shape people right it's always the more fit, at least in this field, and it's probably true in every field, but it's the most fit that tend to come up and ask questions and want to talk a little bit further. And sure enough, he did. Um, I appreciate he, you know, got one of my books. And uh, then afterwards, we ran into each other in the parking lot. And um, he asked me about his knee and, uh, you know, he was running and he was doing some other things that he thought might have tweaked it and uh, you know and he basically was curious as to like kind of can he go back to his activities and in a way almost alluded to that maybe he can't and I hear that a lot and so I wanted to talk about that as a subject today because I just think it's so important um, the answer is quick answer is yes absolutely go back to the activities you love to do and you know strength training is the way to do it and strength training appropriately is the way to not get hurt in the gym as well which I'll talk about um, I want to give a little another side note story too that kind of just hits home how important I believe this to be you know out of everything with strength training and everything of what I do this might be the subject that I have the absolute most confidence in like when I get people that want to start working out and they say you know I really want to get rid of my stomach I want to tone up I want to lose 10 or 15 pounds right away I'm like oh gosh you know okay another one of these you know and you know the bottom line is I can't guarantee it it's like I have no idea if somebody's going to do the necessary means that they need to do to do that, which is predominantly diet. I mean, there's no question that the strength training will help you, quote, tone up, unquote, you know, like you can definitely work on the muscles underneath the fat. Um, but if you're not getting rid of the fat, which comes through basically cutting your calories, cutting your food and doing a little bit extra cardio so you can burn some more calories then you're just going to get more muscular. You're not going to get more tone. So it's like, eh, yeah, there's a way, but are you going to follow the way? You know, when it comes to strength training and injury, uh, rehab, prevention, prehab, whatever you want to call it, I always give the guarantee. I'd say, you know what? 
show up your two to three times a week, we're going to get stronger, you're going to get back out to what you want to do. And it always, always works. Um, I'll give two quick stories on that, then I'm going to talk about how to do it. One guy I've trained for, gosh, close to maybe 25 years, he goes way back to when I had my gym in the Spruce Creek Flying when I first um, had my own brick and mortar facility. You know, before that I was going around training people at different places, renting places, buying space in gyms, you know, that kind of thing. But this was the first time I actually had my own space. And uh, I won't say his name because he's, he's pretty well known where I live and, you know, I don't want to do that for multiple reasons. Um, so anyway, he, uh, he started with me and he was referred by somebody I knew back there and you know I knew who he was and you know he comes walking in and he's a big guy and he you know come to find out he played football when he was in college and you know he says you know my knee has been shot for quite a few years and a doctor wants to cut on it and do a knee replacement and I said okay so I hear that a lot he says but before I do that just want to try getting it stronger and see if that'll work. I said, I absolutely believe in that too. And don't get me wrong, there are some times that um, joint replacements are necessary. Uh, there's many times they're not. So, you know, not going to really go more off on that. So anyway, so I said, sure, let's give it a, uh, a shot. And I did what I know to do with him regarding the knee program. And uh, 25 years later, he's still training at the gym. He never once had that knee replacement. 25 years later, never had it done. Did his pain go away completely? Of course not. You know, but it did it get better to the point where he felt like he didn't want to go under the knife and take chances and possibly lose more range of motion, focus, and function of the knee. Um, you know, he was able to avoid that. And I would, you know, say, of course, that he's glad he did. Um, I mean, that to me is always like one of the greatest stories. I had another one who, um, he's a physician and um, with him it was his back. And he contacted me totally, he got a referral from a uh, chiropractor who had done what he could do with him and said, you know, you need to strengthen your back and you need to do it the right, right way. And I know a physiologist that can help you do that. So he contacted me and uh, at first, you know, well, for the first few workouts, you know, I could tell how skittish he was. Like, he was afraid. And, and that's common. I mean, when, when people have hurt themselves, they're really, really nervous about hurting themselves even more. So I could see it. And at the same time, I could see that if he just strengthened his lower back, the rest of his core, and his hips, that he wouldn't be held back by his back anymore. So... You know, I had a little conversation with him, and um, he happens to be a uh, psychiatrist. So I said to him, I said, you know, do you ever have patients to where you know they're going to get better if you give them psychotropic drugs? And he says, well, of course, you know, that's, I know they work. I said, okay. So do you ever have patients that are scared to take them because they've heard of um, side effects or whatever that may be false, or they're just nervous? He says, well, yeah, that's probably the thing that holds, you know, patient recovery back the most. I said, okay, I imagine that was going to be your answer. I said, so what we've done is we've basically flipped the roles. I'm in the role you're usually in, and I'm telling you that I know there's a way to get better, but you're going to have to walk through the fear to do it, which is do some exercises that look like they could be a little scary to you. So a light went on, I could see it, and he, and he got it, and he needed that you know, truth statement, and I guess we're going on four or five years now, and not only has his back never been an issue since then, he's now won different forms of fitness events I've had here, he literally squats with weight now, he's one of the best masters runners in our area, I mean, he does everything, he's one of the hardest working clients I have, and the only thing we ever talk about his back now is like, if he's lifting something, he's prideful in how he bends down to pick up a heavy dumbbell or a kettlebell and bend his knees. And he just like kind of gives me a wink like, see, I know how to do this, you know. But other than that, his back doesn't come up. So there is a way to do this and do what you want to do. In his case, he didn't want to be in pain when he saw his patients. And 
he wanted to get back to his athletic career because he played basketball, he ran, he did all kinds of things, and he wanted to be active. So when we're talking a little less, um, you know, less serious or less competitive, you know, we're, we're talking ADLs with people, and that stands for Activities of Daily Living, and like people want to be able to do everything they want to do without pain. So without pain, nobody can guarantee you're going to have a little discomfort, but without the kind of pain that keeps you doing from what you enjoy doing. With that, I 100% believe in strength training is the way to do it. One of the things that has always annoyed me is when people think that the gym is where they can potentially get hurt. They think, well, I don't want to work out because I'm going to get hurt. And the reality is it's the polar opposite, okay, polar opposite. If we have weakened atrophied muscles, we're more likely to get more serious injuries because it's the muscles that support the joint and keep it strong. For example, if your vastus medialis, which is the knee, the muscle just above your kneecap, if it's atrophied, which is pretty common because you have to do specific movements like leg extensions to strengthen it, then you're more likely to have chondromalacia, which is runner's knee or a patella injury. That's definitely solvable, but you're more likely to have it if that muscle is atrophied. Over 90% of people that suffer back injuries have weakened erector spinae muscles, which are the lower back muscles. Oftentimes people say, well, I know I gotta strengthen my core, and they start doing all these sit-ups. In reality, that could be leading to more trouble. The reality is you have to strengthen the muscle that is literally giving you the trouble, bottom line. So many people don't strengthen their lower back. It's probably the most avoided, ignored muscle group in the gym. I mean, how many times on Monday afternoons at your local fitness club, you know, it's the running joke, you know, Monday afternoons are your weekly bench press day, you know, because all the guys are in the back of the gym training bench press on Mondays because that's the one day they might make it to the gym and that's the one area they don't want to miss. You know, how many of these guys and gals say, oh, I'm training my lower back today, you know, meet me on the back on the Nautilus machine, you know, <laughs> you don't hear it, but you absolutely should. So, you know, that's a myth that you're going to get hurt in the gym. Um, you're only going to get hurt in the gym if you do it wrong. It has nothing to do, very little to do with load. Super heavy weights, like doing single reps and things, yeah, you could potentially get hurt, but not because of the load, but because you strain or you start moving things around to lift it. But if you're training properly, meaning that you've got your posture in the right position first, you're targeting the right muscle groups, you're doing the repetitions, and that's the key, at a moderate pace. You're not flying through it. You're only going to make the area stronger. I once heard a uh, pretty well-known orthopedic surgeon in town who only did, and still continues to only do, strength and conditioning for rehabilitation. He quit doing surgery because he just felt like most of the time it was unnecessary, and he wanted to prove that you can strengthen the area and fix many, many problems. And I have a ton of respect for him for that. So I once heard him say, and he was a big proponent of like using machines and things. So you would think he was down on free weights and some of the quote, you know, dangerous movements of free weights like squats and deadlifts or whatever. And even, you know, bench press get a bad name. And I heard him say this once and I totally agree with him. When he said, there's really no such thing as an unsafe exercise. It's all in how you do it. And he himself, who was a big machine guy, you know, he was actually a director of one of the most famous machine companies in the world, um, you know, used free weights and did squats. So, again, it's how you do it, you know. I believe in all exercises as being good. I believe some target areas better than others. Like, I believe that the goblet squat actually targets the quads better than a back squat, which is done with the Smith machine or free weights. But I still use both and both work great. It comes down to how you do it. If you're doing a squat, for example, you know, are you first getting your posture right? So keeping your chest up and your back straight. Are you descending, keeping your knees behind your toes so you're pushing your butt backwards? 
are you going down to a depth to where you're maintaining your back posture? In other words, when you're near bottom, is your chest still up or have you let it roll forward? You're supposed to keep it up. So depth isn't as important as keeping that back at the same angle. I don't want to say flat or straight, same angle from where you started, essentially. And then are you coming up under control? If you're doing those things and you're doing a moderate rep range with a moderate speed, you're not going to get hurt. And if you're following good principles, for example, the principle of progression that states you should increase no more than 5 or 10% every workout or every week, depending on your level of moving up, you're not going to get hurt. So let's say if you did um, 100 pounds on a squat and you did 12 really good repetitions where you're going down under control and you're keeping your chest up, you're keeping your knees behind your toes, you're keeping your, your glare looking forward and you're coming up and you did 12 nice reps just like that, the 100 pounds. Well, the next time you work out, you can go up again, five to 10%. So you can go up, say either like to 105 or to 110 pounds and then shoot for your maximum 12 reps again. If you're following something like that, which is just what we call a principle of progressive overload, then you're not going to get hurt, you know? And if you're strengthening your knees and your hips and you're running with a reasonable program, meaning you're not running when you're tired, you're not running hard every day, but you're running maybe three times a week and supplementing those runs with good strength training days, you know, that's the key. And, and, and I hesitate to even say that formula because it really depends on who you are. I know people that can run every day, but they built up to that. So again, they built up to it. If they built up slowly, like maybe they started running a mile a day at a moderate pace and then every week they added just one tenth of a mile to their program, then, you know, they get all the way up to five miles a day, no pain. I mean, that's the key. You know, the Kenyans will run seven miles three times a day in their training so not all of them but this is one of their um, one of their racing teams over there so essentially that many miles a day 21 miles a day six days a week not get hurt and they're running barefoot most of the time and that's not the key either I'm just putting that out there um, but they do it because when they start out they start gradual and they add a little bit each run each week so they're using progressive overload because then their body can get stronger and adapt and then they can come back the next time. We typically get hurt from running, you know, which by the way is not this evil sport. It's kind of like, you know, the squat of cardio. Ooh, you're going to get hurt. Not true. Matter of fact, a uh, little side note here. They did a study in New York City of all these you know, long time runners and then people who never ran. And obviously New York City's got, you know, millions of citizens. So it was, you know, pretty easy to do this study. And what they found was, it was a, it was a study that went over like 30 or 40 years. And I can't remember exactly. You'll have to possibly Google it, but I, uh, I know the study. So basically what they found was that the men and women who had been running for 40 years of their life or more, you know, from their 30s up into their 70s or whatever, had far less osteoarthritis than those who never ran. And that's a fact. I love seeing stuff like that because once again, oh, I don't want to run. It's going to hurt my knees. No, being super inactive and overweight all these years has what has hurt your knees. I mean, I hate to say it, that's the bottom line. But again, that doesn't mean if you're in that situation then you go, you know, I'm going to go run three miles. No, because you're not conditioned to it yet. You don't have the structural um, ligaments and tendons built up yet. So you have to kind of go into it slowly. So you would, again, if that's something you wanted to do, not have to do, because there's many ways to get your cardio and there's many great ways. But if it's something you wanted to do and you fear doing it because of that, then you would, again, start out gradual. Maybe it's just a quarter mile and you're adding just a, a tenth to that, you know, every week. It's just a little bit more. Always getting better. That's the key. Always striving to get better. So the answer to the question of can I get back to my activities is absolutely yes. 
Absolutely. Do what you love to do, but do it right. The problem with one of the groups that might be the old outlier out there is, is CrossFit. I mean, you know, the bottom line is, can CrossFit be good? Sure. I already said everything can be good. But a lot of the activities done are ballistic activities. That's where injuries happen is when we do things really, really fast. Now, I still believe if you're coached well, and, you know, ballistic just means explosive and fast, that if you're coached well and, and your coach teaches you to use very light loads while you're working on that speed of the movement, because those movements have to be done fast, then you can build yourself up to the point and not get hurt even there. The problem is, and it's nobody's fault, it's, you know, just the way it is. If you get 10 people in a room, one trainer and you, you know, and I know how it is, you can tell people to the blue in the face and they flat out just don't listen to you. You know, we'll have somebody right in front of us one time. Hey, slow down. Hey, slow down. Hey, slow down. So, I mean, I couldn't even imagine how, you know, trying to, you know, try to get 15 people to listen to you. But if you're coached up well, even in that scenario, you don't have to get hurt. But again, the likelihood is you might just because you're trying to keep up with the Joneses, which is, you know, a problem anytime you pack a bunch of guys in a room together. And, you know, that's where you're going to end up getting hurt. But traditional strength training, where you're targeting the muscles surrounding every joint, that's my big thing, you know, target the muscles around every joint that the person is going to use mostly in their activity, do it correctly, and you're pretty much can keep doing what you want to do till you don't want to do it anymore. You know, so for example, if it's running, you know, knees, let's look at the knees. Well, you strengthen your quads. That's on the, just on top of your knee. Your knees just below your quads, right on the anterior side, strengthen your hamstrings. That's also just above your knee on the posterior side. Believe it or not, strengthen your both calf muscles, your soleus and your gastrocnemius. That's below the knee. Strengthen your anterior tibialis that's below the knee on the anterior side. And then you also want to strengthen your glutes, especially your glute medius, because a lot of times the hips are responsible for how your leg moves as well, coming from the femur. So if you strengthen those muscle groups, quads, glutes, gastrox, soleus, a tib, and your glute muscles, like I said glutes already, right? Well, I think I did. Anyway. <laughs> I'll listen later and find out. The bottom line is, let me just say them again. Quads, hamstrings, glutes, gastrocnemius, soleus, and A-tip. So those six muscles, strengthen them appropriately by doing proper strength training, isolating them in some cases, doing multi-joint lifts in others, for example, lunges, a form of squat, whatever, and do it properly. Then you're going to continue to be able to do what you want to do. With tennis, you know, that's another one that people worry about. Strengthen all of the muscles around the shoulder. So that's the deltoids, the biceps, and the triceps. Strengthen those muscles. So this will go for anything you could potentially bring up. So really that's the key. And then the second key to this is, again, have a plan where you're doing progressive overload. If it's running and you want to get back to running, depending on your fitness level, start with a half a mile at a time, three times a week then, you know, add literally 0.1, to so 0.6. I know it's boring and it might take forever to get back up to where you want to be. But once you do, you'll be able to stay there. So that's the key. Strengthen the joints and then have a cardio plan or whatever your plan is, tennis, whatever, doesn't have to be cardio, an activity plan that uses progressive overload. If you do those things, you can keep doing your sport as long as you want to and you will really enjoy it. All right, so I think that answers the question, and it's a perfect time to thank Mr. Jonathan Gilden, who is our sponsor, Jonathan and Lynn Gilden. They're awesome. They own the Gilden Group Realtors, and um, they're with Realty Pros, and they do have over 100 million in sales. And when I first read that, I'm like, Man, is that for real? Because <laughs> I mean, that sounds like a ton, but it is, and. They have the most five-star reviews, and that's pretty awesome. So, again, and they're into fitness. So, you know, look, I don't want to sound like totally prejudiced when I say that, you know. Um, but the reality is I know. I know because I've, you know, seen the research and I've seen the wellness studies and I've worked in wellness 
meaning you're working with companies to help make their employees better. And there is so much data out there that says that people that take care of themselves physically do a better job with their work. They have more energy. Um, they tend to be a little bit more optimistic. So, you know, I, I, I just think that's really important and I wouldn't just let any, you know, sponsor sponsor this podcast. So, you know, they meet that fitness requirement, which I think is really cool. So if you need any help buying or selling your house, I mean, give them a call. All right. They can be reached at 386-451-2412 or you can simply go to the website at thegoldengroup.com. All right. I hope everybody has a great day. And until we talk again, be max fit and be max well.